Welcome to my Japanese War on the Sea campaign. Last time we ended on our um, cruiser task force being on the way down to the slot. We have a couple of submarines here. One of them is moving in while the other one is out because it's running low on torpedoes. I decided to add these little markers. I didn't know these were a thing until like a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I added these to mark our successes in this series. Here is a one for the convoy battle, convoy intercepted and destroyed. And here are ones for sinking transports and the two heavy cruisers. Uh, we'll see if this gets too crowded eventually. Uh, we might have to remove these or something. I thought it'd be a cool little thing to signal what has happened in the campaign so far, how many major engagements we've had. So I'll um, skip to whenever something interesting happens. All right. Um, I didn't say anything. Didn't say anything about this encounter before because the ships were quite far away on the tactical map, so I didn't know if we'd actually be able to see them in the game. But here they are. I nineteen reports contact three thousand three hundred yards. That's not too far away. Um. Let's use the binoculars to have a little look at them. Atlanta class light cruiser at the front, followed by a second Atlanta class and then two destroyers. This is the convoy we've been nibbling away at, or task force, not a convoy. No transports to be seen here. Load for one degree of spread. Recognition manual. Light cruiser Atlanta. Ident. How close are we now? 2600 yards. That's pretty nice. That is a pretty nice distance. But I'm gonna get closer. Thinking I'll launch for. Better be safe than sorry. Go. Launching for torpedoes. Spread of one degree. Target number two Atlanta class cruiser. Um, to make it more interesting, I'll cheat my. Uh, camera rules, because we know this entire formation, no point in not showing the enemy ships. I love the design of the Atlanta class, by the way. It's like um, someone took your typical US destroyer and mashed maybe four of them together. Because I think the guns are on the Atlantis are fairly similar to the 5 inch on the destroyers. They're dual purpose, good AA guns. Pretty great, pretty great all around. <laughs> Torpedo hits imminent. Or are they? Are they gonna miss? Judge. Hit. And just about a miss. Damn. I think that two torpedoes in the rear that would be stern, right? Stern, hip, uh, linguistics uh, will probably slow this Atlanta class possibly to a standstill. I don't know. Anyway, we have. Uh, Destroyers breaking off. 
the other cruiser is moving away, and the Atlanta class is burning heavily. I think a couple of these were sunk in the war uh, in real life. Can't remember though. I think the US didn't really want to um, bring them into surface engagements. Maybe they had a comparatively little armor. Belt of 4.4, deck 1.3, magazine 3. We can compare it to the other cruisers. Cleveland, this is something we'll probably see in this series a lot. Okay, <laughs> already. Uh, belt of 5.6. Deck to magazine 5.9. All right, all right. Cleveland's probably the better option for uh, surface engagements. All ships may leave the area. Atlanta is heavily damaged. That's okay. I don't think we'll mark this down. Since we didn't sink anything. Okay, I set up little scouting areas here near Guadalcanal now. The second fleet uses single scout aircraft to scout at this triangle, and the I 19 will scout this way and back. I don't think there are any ships to the east here, so the convoy doesn't have to worry about that. Maybe in the future it would be smart to have a light cruiser in the convoy for scouting purposes, because light cruisers carry catapults and catapult launched aircraft. That would probably be a smart idea. Now, as the day breaks on August the 16th is a good time to review naval strategy. Perhaps we could bring a battleship into the area fairly soon. One of the older, slower ones. If it doesn't get jumped by carrier aircraft, uh, it should be able to take on anything that wants to fight it. So that would be a sort of a purifier way to have a unit in the area capable of beating anything. Well, except, of course, allied battleships. I think we might want to capture some of these islands as well. Just put troops there so the US cannot immediately grab them for themselves. Also, I've been thinking about setting up a preliminary uh, port here in the Shortland Islands. And that's because right now, uh, if I want to rearm my ships, they have to travel all the way up through the chain of islands and into the base. And I completely forgot about the I-34. It's probably been sitting there for like a day. Whoops. Speaking of rearming. I was actually wondering. Is there some kind of representation in this game about the good abilities of the Imperial Japanese Navy for night fighting? Because they had a lot of training uh, in regards to it a lot more than the US did. And that's uh, part of the reason why the first battle of Savo Island went so well. So I've been thinking, is there any kind of representation of that in this game? There is a lot of things about this game that I've kind of just assumed to be true without actually knowing. It's wrong to assume you didn't do that. Could we maybe invade New Guinea at some point? I don't know. That could be fun. But I actually kind of like this, that they're not throwing ships at us constantly all the time. As I said, I think, in a previous episode. 
makes things a little more realistic. How much for an oiler actually? Nippon Maru 15, we can get two oilers. That would be actually alright. Yeah, I think I'm gonna um pop down a little a little base in the Shortland Islands. That seems like a like a decent idea. Air operations time. Scouts are heading out. I'll release these two. And we will create new sea formation with two of these. And then a light cruiser, I think. Well, we will choose the Nagara class ship Abukuma. Because I find the name funny. There we go. And you will be merged into the transport fleet. Abukuma leads the formation. Then we'll manage cargo. Set the course for the Shortland Island. Because the Shortland Islands already has... Oh, it needs more supply. Damn. How much can the cruisers carry? <laughs> 400, 400, 400, 4, 8, 12, uh, we need more, is there a 6 point destroyer that we could get in to carry the rest, if the weakest ones are just 4 points, okay, the Fuji, you get supplies, And you get merged into a group. There we go. Actually a pretty big transport fleet. Yeah, it's good. You know, thinking outside the box for once. This transport fleet has like a surprising amount of firepower behind it now. Cruiser and three destroyers. I find it fun. In real life, of course, the Japanese um, ran supplies um, to Guadalcanal using destroyers because the US had an airfield there. Uh, the US had taken it from the Japanese that uh, well, could, could have threatened and did threaten the actual slow transport ships that couldn't make it in and out in the night. So they did run destroyer transports. But we're doing it for a different reason. That is because the powers that be are not letting us um, have enough ships in the area. Almost all of the US troops on Guadalcanal have been beaten back. They just have a little, little bit of an army there. And at 8.11 in the morning on the 19th of August 1942, our transport aircraft have spotted a formation of enemy ships classified as a convoy with a medium speed. Maybe one battleship or one battlecruiser, I heavily doubt that. I'll drop a save here since we haven't... I haven't, I mean, I haven't saved this whole recording actually. <laughs> Don't see any enemies. See a line in the sea though. Don't know if that is visible on video. Oh the uh, the I-34 is here. <laughs> like uh a little distance away. Seventy-seven thousand yards. Where the long lances can torpedo that far. Or what's the official name? Type 90 something torpedo? I forget. But we see your formation. Eight ships. Let's fly over. Damn. 
that's a battleship in the lead. So an Atlant Atlanta class cruiser and a couple of heavy cruisers. Only a few transports. Four and then destroyers. Alright, well, this is a bit of an issue. We don't have a capital unit to respond to this. So what do we do? Do we let them land? I think I will attempt to intercept, intercept them with the I-34 and I will try and torpedo transports like we did previously. Could we ident what the battleship is? That is a... That's a... That's a... That is a... From memory... A South Dakota, I think. I think the South Dakota has the catapults at the back, like... Straight normally, and the North Carolinas have them crooked. So let's have a, let's have a little look. I was wrong, it's the North Carolina that has the catapult straight. Whoops. I mean, there are obviously other ways to identify these two apart. For example, the North Carolina has two very separate funnels, and the South Dakota I think it has one funnel overall. And there's uh, some guns at the front on the South Dakota that are not present on the North Carolina. South Dakota is a bit more of a big boy and North Carolina is a bit more of a long boy. You know, you can identify these different ways as well. They're pretty similar though. I have to say. Alright, alright game. The um the scout plane that I sent out from the I-34 has spotted uh, formation here that the scout thinks uh, includes a carrier. I am just a little bit skeptical about that sighting. We will try to intercept. What is this? The submarine was right on top of the formation in the preview. Not a big fan of this at all. This is the same convoy we've, we've seen it already. But the courses seem to be matching up pretty well, so not a, not a terrible loss for us. This starting position. I saw a couple of scout planes fly around. It kind of looked like they circled the submarine for a bit, but considering that the convoy is still heading this way and no destroyers, destroyers have broken off to sink me, that they didn't actually see me. That is my assumption, at least. Look at that. Look at that formation. Pretty beautiful. You know, I can appreciate a good warship, even if I think that the, or the, these late US battleships, North Carolina, South Dakota, Iowa, I, I think they look a little boring. I don't know. <laughs> the stereotypical late battleship, I don't know. I think uh, something like the Yamato or the Vanguard have uh, they're a bit more interesting I don't know I don't know if that's a controversial opinion or not but I will stick to it this episode has been a lot of me just talking not a lot of things happening I hope that's fine I sure I would enjoy talking to myself I was going to say but I do that anyway because this is talking to myself.
I've been really surprised by how many people watch, th watch these videos. There are like um, 350 unique viewers in the last month or something. That's a huge amount. It gives me hope that it's not like three people I know constantly having my videos on a playlist going to bump up, bump them up in algorithm because I suspect some people might be doing that as a uh, it's the word benevolent, benevolent trolling. Okay, it has come time to fire. How far at one degree of spread because we are so close that they don't have time to really spread out to have a possibility of missing. Here is the transport. There are the torpedoes. They will soon um, introduce... They will introduce themselves to each other, whatever. I was gonna say something a little bit more entertaining, but... Eh. Boom. Good going. And there she goes. Now I can add here a little report. Like so. 19th August. Um. I-34 thinks a transport. We're coming up on an hour of recording with basically nothing having, having happened yet. Um, hopefully we can get maybe a second convoy attack. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Oh no no. We have uh, dive bombers reported. If that is true, that is a bit of an issue. There is a carrier about. Them. These are in a bad, um, bad formation as well for air attack. Although they're... Okay, turn. Turn, turn, turn. <laughs> when it comes to air attack, you want to get a lot of anti-aircraft fire at the enemy ships. Um, but you don't want to be super predictable. So you, you want to be making a lot of turns and stuff. Breaking individual ships off, of course, especially when there's torpedoes in the water, because they are dangerous. Are we facing... Uh... Dauntlesses. Right? Yep, Dauntless. Cinematic view of enemy air attack. Against dive bombers, like, I guess you could break ships off and maneuver them individually. I haven't done that a whole lot, to be honest. Great. We got one. Lead cruiser hit. Oof, that is a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Very unfortunate. The last ones are coming in on the Takao. to slow down. 
Fires. The cow's going right back to Bar Rabal, that is for sure. Rear magazine flooded. Uh, fire director destroyed. Starboard torpedo tubes, half of them destroyed. Unfortunate, unfortunate. I think Miyoko will follow the Takao. He has less damage, but it's still pretty bad. No fires, luckily. And we only got one of the of the dive bombers. That is pretty bad. I think we might want to consider an escort carrier for um, fighter cover. That way we could at least strike back at the carrier, carrier groups a little bit more effectively. Than by just sailing here and taking the damage. But yeah, T Tagao and Miyoko are returning to the base. So here, after putting out the virus and fixing what we can, the Takao is still moderately damaged. 89% speed. Miyoko is actually worse off speed-wise, 75%. That should still be fine. Is there any... Do two cruisers have any business hanging around anywhere nearby? I'm not sure. We'll have to think about that. On the bright side, the I-34 has encountered the convoy again. So we can hopefully strike off another transport. Uh oh. <laughs> Blew the scout plane a little bit too close. <laughs> Take a step back. I guess this way they'll waste a little bit of ammunition. There is a, an American scout as well, Kingfisher. It's flying about. Hopefully doesn't see this uh, submarine-shaped... ...school of bubbles on the surface? I don't know what to call that. Imprint? Submarine-shaped imprint? I'm a little bit worried actually about engaging this close to the enemy because the destroyers could fairly easily find me. Like, I've had, um, the AI isn't the best, but I've had, I've lost submarines uh, before in this game to enemy destroyers and depth charging. That, I guess, is one reason you might want to attack at a longer range. Okay, four degree, degrees, that's pretty good. 2,400 yards, fire three torpedoes at Type C3 transport. Then we leave in this direction. Again, 
Okay, there's the sinking sound. Lovely, lovely um, series of torpedo hits. Did you see how that like um, spread was perfect? Where first one hit the front of the ship, the second one came in the middle, and the third one um, struck the stern. Like that torpedo spread was a work of art. Uh, point blank, very easy work of art, admittedly. But I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. I'll just uh, change this note to things to transport. Let's see. Transports. Also, uh, there is an encounter uh, here with enemy fighters. I have a funny feeling that this scout plane is not going to survive. I could just um, hit the retreat immediately, but I feel like that's cheating if the enemy, enemy aircraft are like um, about to get you, I guess. I would I don't like to do that. Oh. What? Uh surprise, they are actually attacking my fleet with um fighters. Or at least just flying over the fleet with fighters for some reason. Because that makes a whole lot of sense. This, they, yeah, they are actually trying to machine gun the ships. Fantastic. This would be a nice line if they had bombs, you know. Drop them uh, over the ship's length. Oh no. That is unfortunate. That, that is very unfortunate. Holy fucking shit. Okay. See, I thought they were going to intercept the scouts. <laughs> the US kamikaze my heavy cruisers and it actually fucking worked. There is a fairly big chance that we'll lose a cruiser. Because a fucking wildcat crashed into it. Uh, this is, um, slightly. I mean, it's surprising. Um, you know, you cannot fault a tactical game for giving you some surprises, but. That was something else, man. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just gonna hit the retreat. I'm gonna get out of here now. Man. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Hey. Fuck. The fuck. They... They took Ataga from us. He was so young. Okay, that signals our first loss this campaign. The heavy cruiser Atago has succumbed to a surprise kamikaze strike by a US wildcat fighter.
will Yatago has reached her final resting place. This is where Yatago will remain. Um, I know you're all. Uh, it was that meme. <laughs> Promise me one thing. Uh, okay. Whatever. I know you are crying. On the bright side, we did shoot down four planes, so that's pretty all right, I guess. I think that there is a good time to end this episode. Bit of everything here, a bit of success, a bit of failure, a bit of heartbreak. Um, but I will see you in the next episode of War on the Sea. Goodbye.